What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have a huge week in the market this week. The market is so close to all-time highs, and we have a ton of earnings from some of the biggest companies in the market, like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, um, Facebook. There's a ton of them. We're going to go over it later in this video. At the end of the video, we have a $20 million options trade. The market had a pretty solid week last week. We have some COVID news to go over, and we're also going to be talking about GME's insane run. We have an awesome video for everyone today. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video, and if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day, but Tom, let's get right into today's video. Yeah, the big news on was on Friday, GME's run up was insane, opening around the $45 mark and running all the way to 76 76 at the top, which was an insane short squeeze that went on. The Wall Street's the Wall Street bets traders are really happy right now seeing the stock do this. It's a pretty much been one of the biggest meme stocks over the past over the past week or so, and I really like it to the upside, especially Friday. I'm not sure that I'd buy into it now. It looks like it's starting to pull back finally, but man, this stock was really crazy, and there's a lot of information behind this. With the short squeeze, they also had good online sales, which is helping them, plus sales of the PS5, which I think could help them as well. But mainly, this run up was just a huge short squeeze, and it just squeezed so many people out of the market and then everyone came flying in to buy the stock from wall street bets and everywhere like that for sure and we could see on january 13th gme had some pretty good news like you suggested um but basically what happened is there's just not this this stock has a low float so there's not a ton there's not a ton of shares in circulation so when the demand for this stock increases that's why we see these crazy run-ups so um like you said there was a short squeeze too which really just exploded this stock i was looking on youtube i saw some people turn like 600 dollars into over a hundred grand on this stock in like a week or two like i mean some of the gains from this stock has just been insane and a lot of shorts got burned too like you know any short that shorted at you know twenty dollars or six or even like forty dollars like they just got burned so this stock is is just crazy so what are you seeing for the next week yeah, I mean, I actually am seeing it starting to come back down. I think a lot of people are still going to want to get into the hype and want to make it go up. But man, I think some people are going to start taking profits next week. And it's just one of those things that whenever you see runs like this, they generally come back down at least a little bit. They might not crash and burn. Maybe they'll come back down to $50 or something. But it looked like a pretty good play, um, at least to the downside right now. They made lower highs at the end of the day and then started coming down in after hours. So I think it could do pretty good. And I'm sure glad that TD didn't let me short it. I was trying to short the stock at $60 and I'm glad they didn't let me because it ran all the way up to 76. Yeah, a lot of shorts got burned on this. But one thing to keep in mind is I'm sure a lot of people are like, okay, GME went from $4 all the way up to 76 in, what is it, a couple months. Now I should buy some puts and you have to be extremely careful doing this because the implied volatility is over 210%. So like if you want to buy a put option, like let's say um, you wanted to buy the 60 strike put option that expired on, like that expires on February 5th, right? That'll cost you about $1,300, which, you know, that, that's a huge move. So you have to be very careful playing any type of options on this. Um, I might be looking to get some covered calls on this, to be honest with you, for next week. You know, yeah, we'll, I think we'll that sounds like the smartest play with, with the implied volatility and premiums being so high. I mean, I, I didn't mean covered calls. I meant call credit spreads, just to correct myself. So, like, you know, like, let's say when there's new options that come to the market, like maybe, like, short the 65 strike call and buy the 70 call or something like that. I'll figure it out during the week. But uh, it's definitely on my watch. So what else happened over the weekend? Yeah, there's actually a lot of COVID news coming out this week as Biden's Surgeon General pick says that the U.S. is racing to adapt new COVID strains. And that's pretty insane because the U.K. had their strain. Now South Africa had a strain. And the U.K. even said on Friday that their strain could even be getting worse. And this is pretty big because what the White House also says that U.S. states cannot directly purchase the COVID vaccine under the emergency use authorization. And that pretty much is because like New York, for example, they wanted to buy uh, vaccines all on their own just so that they they could just distribute them how they wanted to, but that's actually not being allowed right now. And another thing is, is that companies are racing to build digital passports for people to prove that they have the COVID vaccine. And in Los Angeles County, 
they're allowing people to have received of COVID vaccine to load proof of that into their Apple wallet on their iPhone so that they'll be allowed in certain places and on flights and et cetera. And that could start happening around the country where you need proof of this vaccine in order to get on a flight or to go into a store or, or just different things like that. And that that's going to be pretty interesting going forward. And I think that'll that'll really slow down the market for, for a little bit, I think, if people aren't allowed to, to you know, use the economy and buy things anymore and really get into those stores and get stuff that they need. Yeah, like especially, yeah, I've been hearing that with travel, like uh, some airlines um, might require people to have a vaccine before allowing them to fly. So I don't know, there's a lot of weird things going on right now. Uh, but what's going on with the earnings this week, Tom? I know there's a huge, a bunch of huge companies, Tesla, Apple, Facebook, McDonald's, like AMD, Microsoft. There, there's so many, I, I can't even list them all, but I'm pretty excited for this week. I know you had the list pulled up here, but uh, what are you looking for? Yeah, I'm really looking for Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Obviously, Monday, it's not too big. There's some pretty big earnings in there, but really, it's not too big of companies on Tuesday. I really like it. We have Johnson & Johnson, GE, 3M, Lockheed Martin, Verizon in the morning. After close, we have AMD, Microsoft, Starbucks. And then Wednesday is going to be the big day. We have Boeing, AT&T, Abbott, the NASDAQ. Apple, Tesla, Facebook, that's going to be a really big um, after hours on Wednesday whenever we see all of those uh, earnings come in with Apple, Tesla, Facebook. I think that's going to be the big three that we see on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we have American Airlines, which is big for the airlines. And then McDonald's, MasterCard, McCormick, Sherwin-Williams. Friday, we have Caterpillar and Lilly. So it's just a very uh, earnings filled week. And I just, it's going to be very interesting going forward with the airlines, with Apple and Tesla as well, and Facebook even. It's just a really big week for earnings. And really, a lot of people are going to be watching this and be careful playing a lot of these options this week because a lot of these are the most popular options to play as well. For sure. You know, the market's so close to all time highs and we have earnings coming out. I feel like this is going to be a pretty fun week to trade. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of volatile movement, which can be good and bad, but overall I'm excited for the week. So let's get right into our member of the day. Today's member of the day is Claire. So she's always commenting on our YouTube videos. We really appreciate it. So Claire, thank you so much for all the comments in positive words. We really appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you don't know, comments really help grow our channel. It takes two seconds to leave a comment and we would really appreciate it if you can leave one. But with that being said, Tom, let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first one, we have Apple to the upside. Yeah, and Apple's doing really great, but make them pass above 140.50 to the upside before getting calls. Yep, and that's all-time highs. You know, Apple broke all-time highs last week. They have earnings this week. It's going to be uh, an exciting stock to watch. With the next one, we have Intel to the downside. Yeah, Intel's going down and AMD reports earnings next week, which could also affect Intel, but make them fall below 56. All right, and with the last one, we have Palantir to the upside. I was looking at this stock Friday morning and this thing just skyrocketed. Yeah, I know you've really been liking Palantir actually the past couple months, but make them pop above 33.25, which was their high on the, at the end of the day Friday. But man, this stock has been very volatile the past year. Oh yeah, big time. Well, let's get right into the $20 million option for this week. We are looking at the Microsoft 230 strike calls that expire this Friday, January 29th. Like I said, $20 million put into this play. Microsoft touched 230 on Friday, came back down. They have earnings this week. We all know earnings is a gamble. Um, I, I know I say this a lot, but I'm going to say it's covered calls because I don't see someone putting 20 mil into weekly options that are $5 out of the money unless they have some crazy insider information. I, I have to say they're covered calls. What do you think? Yeah, I really actually like it. Just like you said, I think that they're shorting those calls or it's covered calls up there at the top. I don't think that they would put 20 mil into them, like you said. I really like the resistance here around 226 to 230. I think that that's going to be a pretty good level and it has been in the past. So hopefully it stays below this, but it is bouncing off the 100 SMA to end the day. I think if we hold that level, we might see it start to pop back up next week, but it's just going to depend on earnings and everything like that as well. And just keep in mind that a lot of these stocks are around all-time highs right now if not at all-time highs and that could have a big factor on earnings for example like like whenever we saw i think it was amd they reported pretty good earnings i believe um no it wasn't amd 
Dang. JP Morgan, Tom, all these bank stocks the other week, remember? Yeah, yeah, JP Morgan, that was it. They had fantastic earnings, and then they ended up going down for a few days just because they had such a significant move to the upside. And you can see they had actually great earnings, like fantastic earnings. It actually blew everyone's minds that they ended up going down on that. But that's what happens when these stocks rise that much. Yeah, I mean, we could see on uh, JP Morgan's earnings the other week. So they were estimating, what was it? They were estimating... Uh, 2.72 EPS, and they came in with 3.79, which is a pretty big beat. Bank stocks, for the most part, had pretty good earnings, and they fell. And, you know, I think the main reason for that is because look at the run-up before earnings. Like, you look at Bank of America, JP Morgan. Like, they had such big run-ups before earnings, and even though they reported good earnings, they still fell. And I'm telling you, I think we might see something similar to that with these tech stocks. Now, I can be wrong. Tech stocks always tend to surprise me, you know, with how much they run up. But um, overall, they had, they had an amazing pre-earnings run up, and I'm excited for this week. But I, I don't know, like, how I feel about them just continuing to explode up through earnings. Unless they just, like, unless they report some crazy numbers, I don't see another leg up. What do you think? Yeah, especially, like, with all this new COVID data and stuff like that coming out as well. That could just put another uh, that could hinder the market more right now and these are tech stocks which did well during that time but keep in mind that even whenever covid first started all the way back in uh february and march it actually ended up making even these tech stocks fell like you can see here microsoft fell from about 187 all the way down to about 135 so they can still fall from this type of news too yeah for sure and with the questions from the previous episode, we have TV asking, hey guys, what do you think of CRSR calls to swing? So uh, let's take a look at this stock. We can see CRSR is a new IPO. They ran up pretty nicely the past couple months. I like the way they're looking right now. They're bouncing off that 35 support. Uh, looks like their next resistance is around 44 to 45. I, I think it's pretty nice. What do you think? Yeah, I really like that move actually off that $35 support. Thanks for showing me this one, whoever asked the question, you know, fantastic stock. I've really liked Corsair the past year as well, and I'm kind of glad that it pulled back the way it did. It could even be a good time to start getting into some shares pretty cheap, considering that they're like a tech slash gaming stock and they make a lot of headsets and keyboards and stuff like that. But I really do like that bounce off the 35 support, and I will be watching it this week for a potential continuation, especially with the way it closed very strongly at highs on Friday, right around the $39 level. So if they break 39 i think that could be a pretty good run up possibly safely to 40 or 41. gotcha we had a ton of comments asking about apple but one of them we have con asking about apple calls if they break 138 so they did break 138 but i just want to stress you know earnings are a gamble um i almost never play earnings so they are a gamble what sucks about earnings is let's say you buy apple calls right and let's say apple's at 140 and let's say the market's expecting a $10 move, you know, Apple can move up $3 and you can still lose money because the stock didn't move as much as the market well, as much as the market was expecting. So, uh, honestly, I really wouldn't play any I wouldn't hold any options through earnings. That's just me because um, it's just too risky, but um, I think there's a lot of opportunity playing uh, Apple and the rest of these earnings stocks before they report earnings and then after. So I just wanted to stress that again. Um, yeah, that can be very, very risky to play earnings. It's just, you know, I feel like we're a broken record, Mike. Every week we're like, oh, don't play earnings, don't play earnings. Yep. But, <laughs> but guys, in the long run, it will come down to where you'll have some bad losses on those. Even though you might win on one or two, you might lose really harshly on like seven of them. So oh, just yeah. keep that in mind. For sure. And what really sucks about earnings is you can predict the direction correctly and still lose money. That's what sucks. That's, that's what really gets me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, with the next question, we have Eric saying, Hey guys, thanks for all you do. I listen every night. What are your thoughts on Square for the long term and the short term? Well, great question, and thank you for that comment, Eric. I like Square for the long term. It looks like a pretty solid company overall. Um, obviously, we can see their stock in the past year went from what is it about sixty dollars all the way up to 246 oh actually no in in march they went from 32 dollars to um, and then 246 dollars a couple weeks ago so uh, this stock has just been doing amazing uh covid really helped them what do you think about the short term on this though yeah, in the short term, I actually kind of like it back to the upside. It looks like it might be bouncing 
off of a support down here around 221 or 220. And I just think it could bounce off of that and keep going up. It did look like it was going to have some downwards momentum here, but I really like the way it closed on Friday and how it popped in after hours as well. I think that we could possibly retest like 227 or 230 and then start going back down. I, I don't see this stock crashing and burning this week though. I, I more or less see it as more of neutral or, or slightly to the upside. Gotcha. But the next question we have Benjamin saying, can you please go over Vale? Appreciate you guys. Thank you for that comment. Let's take a look at V-A-L-E. This stock looks to be doing pretty good too. Uh, what are you thinking, Tom? Yeah, this stock's doing very good. It's also kind of hitting off of its, uh, its support there around 1650. That poses a pretty big level in the past. Hopefully it can hold that and start to come back up. If he's talking about the short term, I, I, I'm not sure I like it too much in the short term, but I do like it for the long term, especially given the move it had this year. For sure. And with the last question, we have Mr. Smith and we have Taylor S asking about Intel. So what are you seeing with that? Yeah, this is actually a very interesting thing to see right now. Intel popped all the way up to that $64 support, which they hit in the past once again. And then they ended up falling all the way back down to the uh, to the long term trend line on here. And there's a lot of trend lines on my chart. So just try to filter that out. But a lot of them are pretty relevant right now. And the stock is actually bouncing off of that trend line right now, which is pretty interesting. Oh, it actually fell slightly below it in after hours. But AMD is going to report earnings this week, which um, hold on, let me go ahead and bring up the earnings date. So AMD is going to be reporting on where is AMD here? It is Tuesday, Tom. Oh, yeah, there it is. It has green. I'm used to seeing AMD with red. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, they're going to be reporting on Tuesday and they, there's pretty much been a war going on between Intel and AMD. And I really like um, both the both of the stocks, honestly. But the, the, the main thing is, is if AMD reports great earnings on Tuesday, that could possibly make Intel keep falling. And if AMD reports bad earnings, Intel could go up. And one thing to keep in mind is that AMD's outlook might not be as good as it's been in the past because Intel just changed CEOs and that's also going to be changing up how Intel does things. So Intel might start getting more competitive in the chip maker market and the semiconductor sector. So hopefully Intel can kind of you know, hold its ground and stay where it is rather than keep falling down to like $50 again. But I think it's all going to depend on what AMD does this week. And AMD has been the real spotlight over the past year. Good stuff. Well, thank you for sharing that. And Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market this week? We have a pretty big week. Like I said, market's so close to all time highs and a ton of huge companies are reporting earnings. You watching anything specific? Um, on earnings, I'm not really watching too much besides the AMD stuff. And then the um, I'm, I'm also going to be watching Lockheed Martin pretty closely as well. But I'm really going to be watching Pfizer this week. There's been a ton of vaccine and COVID news starting to come out. And I think that Pfizer, they're also bouncing off of a support around $36. They're in a pretty good spot to possibly pick up shares or to pick up some like longer term leaps on this stock. I just think that it's a pretty good company for the long term, especially with all these vaccines and stuff. And they're going to start rolling out more than they were. So that means that these vaccines are going to be more in demand. And hopefully that can help Pfizer go up. But don't hold anything through their earnings. I would honestly play it heading in their earnings. Good stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. If you want to trade the same options as Tom and I every single day, plus get access to our bots, you can click the first link in the description down below. We have a sale going on right now, about $40 off. You can cancel at any time. Uh, feel free to click the first link in the description down below. We had some pretty solid plays last week. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day. But with that being said, Thanks for watching.